So 2021 is poised to be a very interesting year for the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo as a company in general. We have just... We recently discussed things on the channel like hardware and game sales that which, let's be real, were completely insane for the system thus far. But for many people, myself included, 2021 definitely feels like a bit of a turning point for the system, especially with new hardware like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X recently hitting the market, sort of extending things like the graphical gap between these systems. We've got a lot of information from the last financial results briefing from Nintendo that we talked about recently on the channel, but the Q&A section has now been officially translated and Nintendo's president Furukara talked about a variety of topics ranging from 2021 software and hardware upgrades, and some people aren't too happy about what was said. So today I want to go over some of the more interesting parts of the Q&A and share my thoughts on it, particularly relating to a history of how Nintendo tends to be doing things, especially lately, and give you guys my take on what all these answers actually mean. Because at the end of the day, a lot of this is just my opinion, but I feel like my opinions are usually pretty solid. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video, but without any further ado, let's talk about what was discussed during the Q&A portion of Nintendo's latest financial results and talk about what it actually means for the Nintendo Switch in 2021. So one thing that a lot of people are looking forward to in the year of 2021 when it comes to the Nintendo Switch is of course software. You kind of have to have games to play on your system in order to get excited about your system. And really, when you look at Nintendo's 2021 lineup, there's not a whole lot going on right now, especially when we're talking about first party games or third party exclusives for the system. Now, President Furukara did talk about the games coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2021, and a lot of people got upset by this. And I sort of want to uh, talk about why they are upset by this and talk about why they probably shouldn't be upset by this. So President Furukara said, our software lineup for the next fiscal year is a topic we'll discuss at the appropriate time. We have already announced our plans to release Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury in February, followed by Monster Hunter Rise in March and new Pokemon Snap in April. As always, we are preparing a variety of software titles for consumers in the coming fiscal year. So because of this answer, I've seen a lot of people online saying, oh, it's gonna be another soft year for Nintendo. They don't really have any big games planned. And I think that's such a weird train of thought, especially when you look at how 2020 played out. You gotta remember, three of the biggest games that came out on the Nintendo Switch in 2021 were games that at the start of the year, we didn't know existed. Sure, we thought a game like Super Mario 3 3D All-Stars was going to be a reality, but a brand new Paper Mario with Paper Mario the Origami King, a brand new Hyrule Warriors with Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. These were two games that we knew nothing about at the start of the year. Nintendo announced these games, showcased them via a trailer, and then a few months later, usually two months or less, these games actually released. In the case of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, even a smaller time frame from when the game was announced to when the game was released. So it sort of shows that maybe Nintendo likes this strategy of just sort of dropping games on you and not having to worry about things like subsequent delays and whatnot. When you look at something like the PlayStation 5, we know about uh, several games coming to the system allegedly in 2021. Games like God of War, Horizon 2, Returnal, Ratchet & Clank, Gran Turismo 5, but even looking at Returnal, which was supposed to be a March release, that game has now been delayed until April. So maybe Nintendo sees how people are getting kind of tired of getting a game announced, a release date announced, and then a delay coming from that game and just sort of is doing things their own way of course there's the whole theory that maybe nintendo directs are coming back as far as general directs are concerned but really i don't even think we necessarily need that as long as the games get announced in some way shape or form that's all that really matters when you look at trailers for games like hyrule warriors age of calamity paper mario super mario 3d all-stars these are some of the most viewed things on nintendo's channel for the year of 2020 so obviously this strategy is working i don't expect nintendo to to say, oh yeah, by the way, there's a new Mario Kart coming out in 2021 during the Q&A of an investors meeting, especially considering the fact that the March 31st deadline is quickly looming, which of course is going to be a very important day for Nintendo as many games are supposedly going away. So a lot of people were upset by this. They feel like it's going to be a soft year because of this answer. You're not gonna see games like Bayonetta 3 and potentially Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, even though this is Zelda's 35th anniversary year and obviously Nintendo is well aware of that as the Zelda franchise is pretty much right up there as far as importance is concerned when you look at something like Mario so I wouldn't look too deep into 
of this. As gamers, we are sort of an impatient breed of people. We get the new game and then we're looking forward to the next game and the next game and the next game. And when you have to sort of wait for an announcement for whatever that next game is, you get a little bit antsy. But I think Nintendo's strategy for 2020 shows what they're kind of going to do in 2021. And if that's the case, there's really nothing to worry about with this. And now that the software is out of the way, we definitely have to talk about Nintendo Switch hardware. Now, we did talk about this very briefly earlier this week because we had some roughly translated stuff from the Q&A, but now we have a more in-depth answer about what was said, especially when it comes to the Nintendo Switch Pro or a Nintendo Switch revision side of things. Now, before we get into that, I do want to highlight an answer that was given about the Nintendo Switch family of systems in general because I think it's actually kind of telling, and if anything, it actually sort of promotes the point that they're could be a Nintendo Switch revision in 2021. Our research has found that approximately 20% of the Nintendo Switch family sell-through between October and December of 2020 in the main regions was due to demand for multiple systems within the same family. We will aim to continue increasing our sales volume by rigorously responding to this kind of demand for multiple systems as well. And in that same statement, President Furukawa also said that the Nintendo Switch has entered the middle of its life cycle and sales have greatly increased in the fourth year after the 2017 launch, reaching a wider range of consumers. I think that lays down an interesting groundwork that 20% of people who purchased a Nintendo Switch Lite purchased it to have a second Nintendo Switch system. And of course, the fact that Nintendo is basically saying, hey, we are in the middle of the hardware life cycle for the Nintendo Switch. I think that's something that will play into my analysis at the end of all of these different statements that were made by President Furukara. But as far as the Nintendo Switch revision is concerned, this is what was said about it. Starting with the subject of new Nintendo Switch models, we will be releasing Nintendo Switch Mario Red and Blue Edition, a set that includes a carrying case and Nintendo Switch console with special Mario designs, along with the release of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury on February 12th. We also plan to release a special design of the hardware as Nintendo Switch Monster Hunter Rise Edition in March. With this release schedule for new hardware and Nintendo Switch having its highest sales in its fourth year on the market, we do not have plans to announce a new model. So for a lot of people right then and there, that statement is pretty much an open and shut case with the Nintendo Switch revision potentially coming in 2021. Nintendo says they have nothing to announce. They're talking about the Mario bundle, the Monster Hunter bundle, but we got to remember what was just said that we just talked about before leading into this answer. 20% of people purchasing a Nintendo Switch Switch Lite are purchasing it as a secondary system within their Nintendo Switch family. So this is another Nintendo Switch that they are bringing into their household. And the Nintendo Switch is in the middle of its life cycle. Now I want to be realistic with you guys here. Do you honestly feel like the Nintendo Switch, if it is indeed halfway through its life cycle, do you think it could sustain another four years of dominance on the marketplace with the current Nintendo Switch model that we have in terms of things like visuals and graphics are concerned? Let's be realistic. Realistic. A lot of third-party games that are starting to come to the Nintendo Switch do have a bit of problems when it comes to things like graphics. Hell, even looking at a game like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, there's a lot of slowdown in that game. Do you not think that a Nintendo Switch revision that's slightly more powerful or handles data in a different manner that could do things like DLSS upscaling that would improve the resolution and the frame rate of the game from an artificial intelligence standpoint, do you not think that would benefit Nintendo? Obviously, people are buying buying multiple Nintendo Switch systems. So if this is the case, why wouldn't you want to introduce a more powerful Nintendo Switch that uses the exact same software, but does it in a different way that allows games to look and play and run a bit better than on the standard Nintendo Switch model? Wouldn't that elongate the life cycle of a system? And another thing is, obviously Nintendo isn't going to confirm a brand new system at this Q&A investors meeting. Why would they? They just talked about two brand new Nintendo Switch variants that are coming out, the Mario bundle and the Monster Hunter bundle. This is a business. They would want you to do things like buy these new system variants if you're a system collector or maybe getting into the Nintendo Switch for the first time. And if they announced something like a beefed up Nintendo Switch model that was also coming in 2021, it would sort of cannibalize the sales for it. Like, why would I go out and buy this system if a newer system that's actually potentially better is coming out in the year of 2021? I am definitely not saying that a Nintendo Switch Pro or a Nintendo 
I'm definitely not saying that a Nintendo Switch Pro or a Nintendo Switch revision is a locked in guarantee for 2021, but I do feel very strongly that it will potentially happen this year because from a business standpoint, it just makes sense. Yes, the system is selling very well, but the 3DS was selling very well as well, and they introduced new systems in that marketplace with things like the new 3DS and the 2DS, a cheaper alternative with the 2DS and a more powerful alternative with the new 3DS. Why wouldn't you? want to elongate the life cycle of the Nintendo Switch by offering a more powerful system. These sort of topics are not things that are going to be discussed during a Q&A meeting, and I think that's why a lot of people are upset because they're hungry for information. They're hungry to know if a Nintendo Switch revision is indeed coming. They're hungry to know about what games are coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2021, but these aren't topics that would be revealed during this. Like, could you imagine if President Furukara came out and said, oh, software, yeah, the you know, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, that, that's coming out this year, along with some Zelda 35th stuff, and we are going to do a Nintendo Switch revision as well uh, during this Q&A section. Like, it would make absolutely no sense. You got to look at the big picture here. This is a business, and President Furukara is the president of the company for a reason. You have to be able to field questions like a politician and, you know, sort of give half answers and sort of unknown answers. Leave the door cracked open a little bit so that surprise, that mystery can seep in. And a lot a lot of people like I alluded to earlier in the video just get a bit impatient and that's why there's a lot of negative feedback that I've seen online about these answers really though I don't think there's anything to worry about if 2020 was indicative of anything it's that Nintendo has a lot of aces up their sleeves and we might not know about some of those aces we might know about some of those aces I think something like a celebration for Zelda's 35th is a pretty much foregone conclusion but beyond that we don't really know what Nintendo is going to bring to the table in terms of software and potentially hardware so take all of these answers on the surface level look at them but realize that there's also non answers within these answers that are probably more telling than anything is or maybe I'm just looking way too deep into this and Nintendo is literally just releasing Super Mario 3d world plus Bowser's fury and Monster Hunter rise those are the only games we're getting in 2021 and there's gonna be no sort of hardware revisions or anything like that even though the switch is halfway through its life cycle these are the two games you're going to get this year and you're going to enjoy them because because yeah, that's what Nintendo is doing. Come on, people, really? really. All right, so those are my thoughts on the Q&A from President Furukara, sort of giving you guys my insights onto this, how I feel I'm interpreting these answers, and what it could potentially mean for 2021. Now, maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree with me. That's the beauty of the internet. Everyone can have a different opinion. So let me know your opinion and your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.